Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, Maine's solar heating manufacturer. Man, you know, if you have a solar collector, it's got to be clean. Hey, I'm Tom Gozy. Welcome to Hot and Cold. New season of our show, a new place. And we have got a lot of cool stuff. We have a secret location. We have a giant workshop where we're doing all kinds of alternative energy projects and energy conservation things and things that just show you how to make your house better than ever. Right here, right now, I got to get the dust off of this. Okay. Okay, we get all the dust off. You get a sham wow, it gets all the dust off right away, just like that. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about solar and about wood because those are two things that I have a lot of background in. I've been doing this kind of stuff for, I don't know, about 30 years. Um, this happens to be a solar collector that I developed for the National, National Renewable Energy Labs a few years ago. I'll talk a little bit about this. We'll actually be doing some projects where we're going to build some collectors, so it's going to be fun. The idea of solar heating in the glorious state of Maine is this. We have 50% sunny days here. We have a very high heating load. Those numbers work well for us. We have a couple of months where we don't have 50% sunny days, but generally speaking, we have a good opportunity for doing a lot with solar heating. And this is really the basic, simple kind of collector. This is not, there's nothing simple about this particular collector, but we'll explain a little bit. A solar collector is a fairly simple device. It's an insulated box, and if we, we look at this, this is sort of the prototype for some kind of test I was going to do. We have a piece of glazing. In this case, we have a piece of glazing that's plastic. Most solar collectors that are called flat plates, which is what this would be considered, um, have glass glazing. Uh, as one who used to put these things in, I never liked glass glazed collectors for a reason. And the reason is they're really heavy. A collector this size would weigh about 100 pounds if it was glazed with glass. I just want to show you this one glazed with, whoop, <laughs> with plastic. If, if I could balance it, it's a one hand deal. It's very light. I built it, necessity being the mother of invention, I built it for me to handle. So what we do with a, a solar collector is we build basically a mini house with a lot of window. It's all window as a matter of fact. We have a little bit of side wall here which happens to be foam. Uh, we have a backing which happens to be foam. But once the sunlight gets into that case it gets trapped. The sunlight passes through because it's, um, it's radiant energy. Sunlight passes through and hits something black. Traditionally solar collectors have this kind of thing, an absorber plate. This is a copper absorber plate. They also make them out of aluminum. And they're attached, there's a waterway attached to it, just a copper tube. This is welded to the fin. We call that a fin. And if we take a bunch of fins and put them together, usually they overlap slightly or just touch like that. Um, these would be six inches apart. And these are different sizes, obviously. And that would be inside this case. So sunlight comes through. When sunlight hits something black, it changes to heat. The heat heats the fin. The fin is cooled by water or antifreeze running through the tube. That goes into a storage tank in the basement. Very simple concept, very simple device. Um, all the flat plates you're probably going to see kicking around are going to have some kind of fin affair with a copper tube and a fin like this, either aluminum or copper. There may be variations on the thing. That one is, what is that, like a rhombus or something in the middle. Um, but generally, that's the way they're made. 
we'll get into the insides of collectors as we start to do some more. Today I just thought we'd talk about some of the stuff <clears throat> that I've been doing in my checkered past. So we have a collector here now that is a little different in that there's not a piece of glass there. Glass in a solar collector is normally one layer thick. Now you stop and think about a house with a single layer window, a single pane window. We don't like houses with single pane windows because the energy that builds up inside when the sun shines through the window goes right back out through again. Same thing with solar collectors except it's worse. When you get inside this case here and it is um, sun is shining on it and it's insulated uh, very well. It gets really hot in here. If you're not extracting heat out of this, it'll go up to 300 degrees fairly quickly on a, on a reasonably sunny day. If it's 300 degrees inside your house and it's 50 degrees outside your house, that's a temperature difference of 250 degrees. Heat goes from hot to cold. So this hot fin won't stay hot for long and it'll exit back out through. In reality, when you're running water through fins, solar collector environment does heat up, doesn't heat up to 300, might heat up to 140 or something on a day when it's, when it's say, uh, 30 degrees or something like that. The 100 degree difference is a pretty good number. So considering that, if it's 100 degrees inside your house and it's freezing outside, um, or, you know, th there's a lot of heat loss there, I'm trying to say. So what we do in our homes, where that temperature difference is always less, uh, is we use double glazed windows. And that's what this stuff is. This is double glazed plastic. And it is a, a product called, uh, it's a plastic, it's actually polycarbonate plastic. Um, this will be a single glazed version of it. Um, and it's actually what this, these products are made for are greenhouses. I adapted it years ago for our use for solar collectors. When you double glaze a solar collector, it's just like double glazing the windows on your house. We save a lot of energy. We keep the energy inside. Makes this more efficient, especially in wintertime in Maine when it's cloudy and it's cold and all the bad things happen that we need to generate as much energy as possible. We want energy to get into our house and not exit. We want the same thing for a solar collector. And when you couple the fact that it's relatively strong um, and it's relatively light, this is four foot by four foot for a case, uh, there's really no, no reason to not consider using it except it's a little different. It is plastic. People don't like to use plastic. This has a, actually a double coating. It's uh, polycarbonate plastic with an acrylic weathering surface. Acrylic plastic stands up a lot better to sunlight. It doesn't fade the way sunlight, uh, the way, uh, 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 it doesn't fade in sunlight. It doesn't break down. So by putting a layer of acrylic on the outside, polycarbonate will yellow in sunlight, but with the acrylic on the outside, it doesn't. It filters out the ultraviolet radiation. We get a solar collector case that lasts a long time. We, make, we couple the fact that it's light and it's a real winner. It's not quite as pretty as a nice piece of glass, but it's also unbreakable. You know, this is, uh, Lexan is the other trade name, you may know that. You know, it just doesn't want to break. That's a good thing when you're doing, uh, um, when you put something on the roof, if you're worried about baseballs hitting it, you're worried about somebody going on your roof and hitting on the solar collector, it's not going to be an issue. Uh, I've used this for a number of years. Sometimes it yellows a bit, but that's a price that I'm willing to pay for the efficiency, for the ease of handling the solar collector and the rest. So we've got um, an insulated case that works really well. And we've got something inside here that's a little different than these things, these fins. And I think maybe we ought to, we ought to open that thing up and take a look inside. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Okay, so what I've done, um, <clears throat> this was a plastic case as well as the glazing. What we did was we bent the, uh, the plastic and we were able to do that by heat forming it. So this just kind of fit right over the side of the thing. And let's just pick that right off should just come right off. There we go. And you can see it's uh, kind of a cool concept. Nothing really to it weight-wise. And <clears throat> this is the collector, the absorber. Now this is taking the place of this. And it's kind of unique and maybe we'll set it up here and do a little show and tell. Uh, we'll have to set it a little differently but <laughs> this is my 
everything I do seems to be focused around plastic bags, and you'll see why in a minute, but this is one of my plastic bags. It's a plastic bag. And it has two manifolds, just like a regular collector would, but instead of having the fins to cool it, um, we have a top manifold with holes in it that trickle water into this bag. The water trickles down, this would be on an angle, down to the bottom here where there's a sump, basically, and this is uh, damaged, I see. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if we can do water with it, but you see the big holes here collect the water. Now, um, this borrows from a, a design called a trickle collector from years ago where they used to use corrugated metal roofing that would look a lot like this stuff. You know, it has corrugations and where it would be metal, they'd trickle water in these slots here and being metal and being black, it would heat up in the sun. The water would heat just as it trickled down, just like water trickles down a roof. On a hot summer day, if it happens to start raining, you, if you feel that runoff coming off a roof, it'll be hot at solar heat. The problem is when you take an open absorber like that and you just trickle water down it, water evaporates off of the, off of the face of the um, absorber because it's hot. It hits the back side of the glazing and it fogs the window just like a window fogs in wintertime in your house. That doesn't work real well for um, solar purposes because it, the fogging of the window reflects sunlight back. So <clears throat> by trickling the water inside a plastic bag, we get around that whole issue. This is a special plastic that worked well when it got wet, it actually clung together. So the two faces, when water hit it, would just stick together by capillarity. And what happens that's kind of interesting, if we grab this again, remember the fins, this is traditional construction. We'd have fins every six inches on the manifold all the way across, running the length. Um, this is where we have the water, this is where it's cooled. So the fin out here is really hot, it's cooler where the water is, and there's a little bit of loss of efficiency in this scheme. In this one, we have water everywhere because it wicks out by capillarity. Uh, it sheets out in the entire absorber. And you notice it's clear, you can see right through it. And the aluminum facer on the insulation on the backside is painted black. So what actually happens in this collector is the sunlight comes in, passes through the bag, which has clear water in it, um, <clears throat> hits the black painted aluminum, makes heat because of that. The heat wants to radiate back up through. It's collected by the fluid that's passing through here. And we're not going to be able to show you this week on this one because this is about 15 years old and it has gotten damaged in shipping. So that's. Uh, but there was another reason I, uh, I wanted to show this today, and that is uh, this particular plastic was an early candidate, and you know how it, it looks nice and smooth here? Um, over time, this got real wrinkly, and when it got wrinkly, it didn't um, wick out and flatten out nicely. We have some plastics we know will solve that problem, and we're going to do a new version of this. We're going to build it on the show. We're also going to do another version of this. There's a cheap way to make these absorbers. We'll show you how to do that as well because you see what the, the case is. The solar collector is not a complicated device. I mean, it was, the first solar collectors of this type of flat plate collectors were made back in the 1700s and there's just not much to them. And they've continued to, there seem to be a sort of a, um, a rediscovery of the technology every 50 years or so for other reasons. And we have, of course, in the past 50 years, have had several go-rounds with it. Um, and they're very effective collectors. They're very efficient. And if you double glaze them, all of a sudden the performance gets really impressive. And we don't, we're not talking about a big expense, a big investment for doing this. So, so I've got a couple of things we've done. I had a patent on a collector like this. Uh, we did some work for National Renewable Energy Labs. We'll show you the updated version of that. This is, this is, we did this live on camera, or we took this apart and found it's broken. That's okay. That's one of the reasons um, we didn't use this bag. So, anyway, solar collector 101. That's the start of it. Now, once you make a solar collector and it generates hot water for you, you have to do something with it. We have to store the heat. We call that thermal storage. And let's take a look at how we do thermal storage here.
Okay, so this is, um, this is a tank that I use just for testing because it's easy to move around and it's small and I actually stuck a pump on the side of it so um, so for when I'm running tests on collectors like this I could just drag this outside, set the whole thing up very quickly, tear it down real quickly. There's a lot of different ways to store energy when you're heating hot water you're storing hot water. This is an unpressurized tank. We could go and get a, a regular electric water heater tank and use that but we don't normally do that for a couple of reasons. The standard tank that you would buy at a Home Depot is a steel tank that has a glass lining inside of it and that glass lining as this tank gets hot, as a tank gets hot, uh, the glass lining can crack. So normally we want to do something different than use a traditional electric water heater tank for solar hot water. This uh, happens to be a mini one. This is about 35 gallon tank. It's plastic. It's got a foam core and uh, it's unpressurized and we can use that kind of a system as a drain bag system where we pump water up to the roof and through the collector, in this case it would trickle down the collector, but it could be a fin tube collector where we, we fill the tubes pumping upwards. Either way, we heat the water and it comes back down. All the pipes in that system drain back to this tank by gravity. And by doing that, uh, when the pump shuts off, all the water drains back into the tank, rendering everything freeze safe. So that's a system that we do a lot here in Maine because it's inexpensive. It's fairly easy to hook up. We don't have to mess around with antifreeze and pressurized systems and the rest. Um, and this, so this is one version. The problem is when you take this tank and you want to do something bigger, now we, we got to get this through a door. This one will fit through a door because it's only 35 gallons. A traditional solar system for domestic hot water in the state of Maine is going to be a 60, a 60 square foot array of solar collectors which means we need about 100, maybe 120 gallons of water. So we have to go to another variation on the theme, which is over here. So, so one of the questions I'm sure you're wondering as, as we go through all this stuff is, what does this bozo do for a living anyway, that he has all these things he's messing around with? Well, this is what we do. We manufacture these tanks for solar systems. And this won't be an infomercial show, I assure you. Um, but it just happens to tie in with, I think, what a lot of folks are interested in these days. This is a 550 gallon tank. We actually make this, we used to make tanks just for solar systems. These tanks are made primarily for wood boilers, but could be for solar heating systems as well. This is 550 gallons, and the tank knocks down into individual panels. And we're going to be doing a project where we're putting in a thermal storage system. And the idea here is that whether you're burning wood, or you're storing sunshine, solar energy, um, you have to store the energy for later use to make it more convenient for you um, lifestyle wise. So this tank is easy to get into a basement, 550 gallons, this is about five and a half feet square. You know, how do you get something that big into a house? Even if it was long and skinny, it's going to be extremely heavy. So we break this down into individual panels. There's 12 of these panels. They're 16 inches high. They stack three high. Everything screws together. It's real quick and easy. There's a liner that goes inside the tank. And let me grab the liner. The cameraman didn't know I was going to do this, did he? But this is a liner for the tank. And it unfolds. And you'll see us putting one of these in. I'll put that back over there. Sorry, Mr. Cameraman. Uh, and that just drops inside the tank. So this is really like a highly insulated above ground swimming pool for really hot temperatures. That's all an unpressurized tank is. Very simple, less expensive than a pressure tank, especially when you get into big volumes and you don't have to build your house around it or have the tank in a separate building. So once we do that, you know, we've got the drain back, we're pumping water to the roof and back down again, and it's not under no pressure, so we're just pumping tank water right out. That's all well and good, but then we've got a tank full of hot water we have to do something with. Well, we can pump water out of this tank into, say, a radiant floor, or maybe some baseboards. Um, when you do that, you can't have anything that's ferrous, no iron or steel in the system, because it'll corrode. Unless you have corrosion inhibitor, eh, it gets kind of clunky. If it's a radiant floor, it's going to be plastic tubing, so you could do that. If it's copper tubing, you can do that. But there's this other use we have for hot water, and that is washing ourselves, having tap hot tap water. So for that, we need a heat exchanger. And the other part of the system that we deal with are heat exchangers. And this is a heat exchanger. I'm just going to take it right out of the tank. 
This is a heat exchanger for domestic hot water that we manufacture here in Maine. And it is all copper. Copper is an extremely good conductor. There's a lot of, believe it or not, a lot of engineering that went into this. And it does a couple of things. Cold water comes in here, okay? It goes down this pipe to the bottom. It goes up four coils that run in parallel all the way up to the top. The coldest water is in the bottom, the hottest water is at the top. This just hangs on the side of the tank like this. So installation is really quick and easy. So cold water goes in here, hot water comes out this other side. This is an anti-scald valve. Because it's solar heated or wood heated, we can store water in here that's 180 degrees. Way too hot for tap water. Uh, the wrong person at the wrong time turns the tap on and doesn't know the tank's 180 degrees, they're going to get scalded. This is what an anti-scald valve is for. It mixes the water. The other side of this T where cold water goes in, cold water also goes in the anti-scald valve and mixes down the hot water to whatever temperature we set it to, which is maybe 105, 110, something like that for safe uh, domestic hot water. And the mixed water comes out here and goes to the uh, water system. So that's what that's all about. <clears throat> so that gives us, uh, we have very efficient heat exchangers that we've spent a lot of time developing um, that get most of the energy out of the tank. They're extremely efficient in doing what we need to do, which if this was just a, a tank for domestic hot water, we could extract a 95% of, of what would be in this tank as domestic hot water through that copper coil. Um, took a long time to figure that stuff out, but there it is. Uh, the whole system comes knocked down, very easy to put in. This is a variation on the theme. This is a smaller tank that is only partially assembled. This is a 180 gallon tank. This would be more for a domestic hot water system than that would be. That would be really for space heating if you're doing solar or would be for a wood boiler. This would be for just a, a solar system, a, a reasonable size solar system for domestic hot water or maybe a very petite space heating application. Again, the same thing. And this one is not um, all put together. You can see here there's three tiers here. We haven't screwed this, this one on yet, but um, they just fit right together. We just use self-drilling screws for, the, uh, for putting the whole thing together. So this is something we have a patent pending on, and uh, you'll see more of these as we get to put them in. We're going to do a whole system, so we're not just going to mess around in the shop here and say, oh, this is what it is. We're actually going to put a system in. We're going to get it running. We're going to see what kind of things happen. Do we have leaks? Do we mess something up? You know, if you don't mess something up, you're not doing your job right because that's the way the world works. Things aren't perfect as you might see on other home improvement shows. <laughs> things don't go right all the time. So we'll, uh, you know, solar collectors tear, they break, they leak, tanks do. Uh, you cut yourself, you may notice, that I measure my progress in home improvements by how much blood I shed. I don't want to shed blood, but if I do, I, I know I'm doing something wonderful. I just make sure I have a lot of Band-Aids kicking around. Anyway, we're going to keep going here on these projects. We're going to do a solar system. We're going to mess around with an experimental wood boiler. That'll be fun to see. If you can play with water and you can play with fire, this is great stuff. That's what I do, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, I'm not sure I want to get on the roof a lot, but we're going to wind up on the roof. We're also going to do some conservation projects where we uh, super insulate buildings because this is Maine. It is cold in the wintertime. And if we're going to do solar heating here, we're going to heat with wood. I don't want to handle any more wood than I have to. So we're going to make sure that we do it the most efficient way possible to conserve our forest resources and to stay comfortable and be cheap about it, too. That's, that's, a, that's, 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 what, is, that's green, isn't it? And remember to check out our website. You'll see it at the end of the show. It's hotandcold.tv. It's got all kinds of stuff about what we're up to and what we've done. And just good information is there. It's got a lot of links. It's a good resource for you, as hopefully this is. And we will see you next week, same time, same place, right here. Oh, man, we're going to have fun. Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, Maine's solar heating manufacturer.